Paul, get the questions. Go ahead. Yeah, just really the really first thing I want to congratulate TCU, man. They were they were a, a wrecking crew, man. They were they were really good this weekend, and you know we knew when we saw they were coming to us what we were getting into. If you know from everything we had heard, I mean it was true that they were really hot and they're really tough to beat. And we'd already seen them, obviously, um, but whatever went was going on in the middle of the season, and they fixed it. Uh, they're they're awfully good and then the other thing too is our grounds crew I thought they did an incredible job battling the rain and tarp on and off I'm sure they haven't had much sleep but uh, the field played great it was it was uh it was unbelievable so appreciate those guys and you know just the game I mean we didn't hit uh, they pitched extremely well you know Cam Brown gave us a shot in the first to get him what I mean by that is scored probably three runs and, and we only scored one. He worked his way out. And uh, then the left-hander Ben, I don't know if I can pronounce his name correctly, so I won't try, but I thought he was awesome and uh, came in and threw what about 70 pitches or so and had a couple of really quick innings and, and just held us down. And, you know, it looked like we had a chance to build on that lead a little bit and then bang, you know, they, they punch in a run we don't score in the next thing they score three more and all of a sudden we're losing and you know then we didn't stop i mean i mean honestly we ran out of pitching if we'd have won the game i don't know who we would have thrown or how we'd have gone about it um you know we've been battling this all year and we knew everything had to be just right for us to get through a regional we felt like we had a better chance to win a super re regional obviously than a regional because of our injuries and, and and lack of pitching depth and experience that it was going to take you know we were either really going to have to hit or our starters were going to have to give us a lot of innings and you know unfortunately the the teams we played didn't give us that opportunity but really proud of the team you know spent 12 hours here on the field sweating yesterday delays and you know i know that i got home after midnight and you know, it takes a while to get to sleep. And then I'm sure the players are the same way. And, um, you know, they, I feel like they gave us everything they had. And we were in that game for about five, six innings. But uh, proud of this the whole season, you know. Winning the Western Division, beating out LSU and A&M and some of these guys that have all these players this year. I'm just so proud of our players. And then, you know, tying Florida for the overall SEC championship and, uh you know, we've only got three of those in my 21 years. Uh, those trophies are hard to get and uh, super proud of the guys. So uh, with what we have in that locker room that's not on the DL all year, I, I think that we did we did all we could do, honestly. Bob, get us going. Dave, you guys obviously beaten a lot of good teams this year, sw swept a lot of good ones, but TCU just seemed to have your number. When you look at those three games, none of them were particularly close. What, just what do you think happened against them? Um, they're just good, you know, I mean, the one in, I throw the one in Arlington out the door, you know, I mean, they beat us 16 to six. We beat Oklahoma state 18 to three the next day because they made us mad. It was early. You never know, but we saw the talent. Now the ones here, uh, you know, they, they whipped us yesterday because we didn't get off to a good start on the mound and they, they just are swinging the bats extremely good today. Um, you know, I think Adcock gave us an inning fighting it behind in the count a lot. And I thought, I thought Hagan Smith pitched great today, you know, coming off of getting ready for a game, mentally pitching yesterday, throwing 36 pitches. And he just pitched lights out. And I think if he'd probably tell you, you made one mistake and that was on the 0-2 pitch to the, the hitter, the single up the middle. Uh, other than that, uh, he was awesome. And a uh, really talented guy, and we got to take care of him. And, you know, he probably could have gone out another inning or two, but we didn't feel like that would be very smart on our part. So um, what do I think? I just think they're really good at every position, and they have a lot of pitching depth, and they're playing really well right now, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. Um, you know, if they play like they did this weekend, they're going to be hard to stop by anybody in the country, maybe Wake Forest. Regionals on the road, got in Omaha from the road, lost some regionals here. You, every year, it seems like five, six, seven 
hosts don't win. I think everybody just assumes, oh, you got a regional, you're gonna you're gonna no. advance. How, how how hard is it whether you're at home or on the road? You know, it's really hard. It's all about how are you playing? Are you healthy? You know, I think about 21, we had first base balance broke his ankle in tournament. You know, we got a center field that's got strep throat. And these guys are hitting like two and three in the order. You know, it's just little things that happen. That was and we lost to the super regional in game three. And we'd won everything that was put in front of us up until that. Until then, you know, but you just you just don't know what you're gonna run into and how the ball's gonna bounce and you know, where's everybody's mind at? You, you know, sometimes it's easier on the road because people aren't expecting you to win. Sometimes you're expected to win, you get a little tight. That's not what happened to us here. We got beat by a really, really good team. And uh, maybe maybe we were running out of gas. Top of the first inning, you load the bases there with three walks and then only get the one run. How deflating was that? And did that maybe shorten up the leash on Adcock a little bit, not being able to drive in two or three runs there? Well, I already mentioned that. You know, Cam Brown gave us that inning to get him. We only scored one. It wasn't deflating, but we had, you know, because we had the next inning against him. We didn't know that he was going to come out and kind of turn it around, uh, which he did. But it was just, uh, you know, it was a good inning. You know, we saw a lot of pitches. We didn't get a hit, but we saw a lot of pitches. We made him work, and, you know, then he recovered. Uh, so then, then you kind of go, wow, should have scored more runs. We already knew that. But uh, we figured we were going to have to score eight to ten runs today to win. And, um, yeah, but, you know, as far as leaving Adcock in, we just, we just felt like, you know, it, it wasn't ahead of enough hitters. He wasn't finishing them off. And Hagan was available, and, uh, you know, we needed to make that move. You mentioned the possibility of Hagan throwing yesterday, but were you surprised by how much he was able to give you and just how well it went after the way things went yesterday? Yeah, we figured he'd, he'd give us 60, 70 pitches today because once once he said he felt good and he did feel good, and he's going to tell us the truth, uh, you know, that, that'd be about where it, would, where it would stop. You know, if he hadn't thrown yesterday and he started today, he probably we would have won 100. So it was about right. Y'all got some life there, and I think it was the fifth inning when Borfin and Wagner went back to back. Just what did you see on those two swings, and kind of what was that at the mood in the dugout at the at that time? Well, I I think Borfin worked his count to a three one count, and just did uh just did an incredible job of getting to a hitter's count and got a pitch he could handle, and he hit it right where his pitch out over the plate, hit it dead center, and got every bit of it, and you know. Uh, I think they gave us one run lead and then and then you know Wagner came up and actually hit a pretty good pitch that was away but just hit it where it was pitched and you know the ball was really flying to right field the last couple of days and right when he hit it you're thinking I hope it gets out of here and then halfway there you're going that's way out of here uh you know we had a two run lead but we also knew that we were running out of bullets so to speak and uh you know we we needed to keep scoring and we didn't disappointing end but y'all were the number three overall seed it's so many injuries during the year just how do you think this team should be remembered well you know I don't I don't like to use the term overachievers or any of that because I think they're good players uh but this is the team and I've said it many times they show up and they think they're going to win they showed up and played hard for us all the time I really can't remember having to really talk to the team about what we're seeing. It's not a good enough effort. You're not playing hard. Never really saw that from this team. Um, just find a way to win. They would find a way to win. And they were fun to be around, honestly. Uh, and I'll talk to them about that uh, on our, on our, in our meeting when we finish up in a day and a half or so. But uh, I think what, what, what they're going to be remembered for is they won the SEC championship and they won 43 games. and uh, they had like what one guy on the all, all SEC team. It's very rare. You win the SEC championship, and you know you look at Florida. Would they have five, a couple of second teamers? I mean, it was something else. And so it was just a bunch of guys that played as a team, and they won a championship. And uh, you know, hope they get celebrated in ten years. You know, and they come back, and you know, I bet they're all doing something pretty good. Well, their second baseman, Richardson, tripled his own run total here. What what, what was the book on him? What did you see? I don't know, man. I don't know. That was amazing. Hats off to him. Uh, 
you know, he played Baylor last year and uh, Coach Thompson's brother was, you know, was just kind of come in and I'm sure he tried to keep him and he got away. Uh, he wasn't known for power because we looked into it and uh, good defender, good hitter, tough out. He was all of that. I mean, you think about a guy, he's sitting in, in that big lineup. There's a lot of pop in there. He's sitting in the five hole because he drives and runs. And just by hitting the ball, double singles, running around third, less than two, making contact. Um, when he got here, and it was something else. You know, you could say, oh, I flipped a couple balls over the right field fence, balls carrying, but – he hit that last ball off a 97 mile an hour fast, all over 400 feet dead center. So there's some legit pop in there. And uh, I hope somebody signs him professionally. Yeah, the nucleus of your roster for next season and just maybe the state of the program where you feel like going in next Well, season. you know, we, we're going to lose some guys. Um, there'll be, you know, guys, you know how it is every, every year now with the way everything's set up with uh, portal and kids coming in and, it's you rebuild your roster every summer it's not going to change the way it is if you don't like it better find a new job if you're going to coach at this level that's the way i look at it so and there's some coaches that don't like it and they got out um it's hard to keep it's hard to it, it's hard to bring in a freshman and keep him happy if he's not playing and you, you hope they come back but uh i'm looking forward to Getting this recruiting class in, we have the number one ranked recruiting class in the country. We're going to get smoked in the draft, and we know that, but we're going to make sure that we have it covered and the guys that get through. I hope those freshmen can help us next year. The guys that come back, you know, they've got a lot of experience, and uh, and we got to get the right, the other guys, the grad transfers, the portal guy. We we got to get just the right ones. It's not about getting the superstars all over the country. It's about getting guys that are good players and good teammates. You know, Dave, the injury starting before the season with Jackson, continuing through the regional with, with Peyton Holt and lots of guys in between. Um, I think he had six position players who missed games, some out for the season. I mean, when you look back at that, I mean, just how, how crazy was that and the way you guys uh, handled that, like managed that, I guess? Yeah. Well, it's like I told the coaches, they did a great job this year dealing with all the issues we went through. I told the players, same thing. You know, great effort. What a, what a good team. They liked each other. It, it all adds up to some wins. It might not be the big wins to, to get you to Omaha, but it was wins to get you to through another conference series and then another conference series where other teams maybe are falling back. And we just hung, hung around the top, and we never – we never had that really bad streak because a lot of teams will have, they'll go, they'll go one and one and five and two weekends. And we always found a way to go three and three next week. We go, you know, we'd sweep somebody and I don't know. It's just, uh, we did it somehow. And when I say we, it's, we, it's all of us, man. They, it was the players, the coaches, the, the training staff did a great job. Our doctors. I mean, I've never talked to them so much in, 20 years as I have this year and phone calls, text, late night text, you know, who's going to be available and who's not. And uh, they all worked hard to try to help us get some guys on that field. Now, you know, something crazy had to happen today. It, it was like TCU. They just weren't, weren't going to let that happen. It seemed no, like they're, they, they had too much pitching. They had too much pitching. They don't, they don't walk you. And uh, they don't give you any easy innings. They don't, they don't boot balls. Um, you know, I mean, we made an error today. I got a third base playing second. He never played second all year here until yesterday. You know, Cali's not a second baseman. He's a corner guy. And we're just trying to get some some guys in the lineup that could swing the bat. McLaughlin played third base one time all year maybe. Uh, he's first baseman. He's DH. But I need to keep my three outfielders in. I mean, we were just fighting it, trying to figure out how we get offense in there. Um, but uh, they don't give you much. They just – you know, and they don't walk in, they don't make errors, and you got to hit. You got to hit a lot. Uh, I mean, we only made, I think, two or three errors the whole tournament. I think pitcher made one and maybe two. Maybe we made two errors. I don't think we made an error in the SEC tournament. I don't know if we made an error against Vandy the last series. And that's one reason we hang around. We 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 just didn't we didn't mess up a whole lot, but uh, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to beat TCU. 
made a move today that worked out for you, but something you don't see every day. You intentionally walked the nine hole to get to the leadoff. Have you done that very much? I mean, have you no, and you know, they're both good. The nine hole to me, I mean, he's got eight home runs now. He's got power. We lo I love his bat speed. You can see the, the bat zipping through the zone. You know, that's not a punch and Judy hitter, so to speak, if you guys remember that term from the old days. You know, he's not just flipping it over the infield. That guy can drive the ball. And, uh, you know, but but it was uh, left on right. And I think once he got behind a, a ball or two, he said, let's just put him on. Let's go left against left. And their leadoff man's a really good player. He's got a lot of personality. He's confident. Uh, and Hagen took care of him. And uh, we have a lot of confidence in Hagen. And we just felt like maybe that was a better matchup at the time. That's one, Andrew. Yeah, Coach, just offensively, you know, it probably wouldn't matter today, but just how frustrating is it that things never really clicked, or, you know, whether it was injuries, inconsistencies, or just not having the right hits at the right time, just overall offensively? Yeah, I mean, offensively, there was a few of our guys that just didn't have a good tournament, you know, and maybe they're tired, maybe, I don't know, you know, some of them are first-year guys and at this level, and, you know, it just didn't happen. Again, you can also give credit to some really good pitching we faced. I mean, Santa Clara is one of the better teams we've played this year. I mean, that is a very good team. So we played four games here against them, two against them, two against TCU. You know, we we faced some good arms, but it was frustrating because I feel like we're a better hitting team than that. Um, but, you know, it's just a combination of everything. And I think today, honestly, just a little tired from yesterday. Swings are a little slower, uh, just, just not quite there. Coach, appreciate your time. Okay, thanks.